Control Aridin, we got more of them. And this time we're up against Consume Monsters, which uh, I saw a lot of. I saw a ton of Consume Monsters, but this one in particular, I thought was really cool. Now, uh, this 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 match actually happened before Gwent Slam, and so I came into it very surprised and very astounded. Uh, but after Gwent Slam, it's something I, I saw a couple of times, so I'm le now I'm less enthralled about it. But at the time, I think it was really interesting, and I want to show it off. So that's basically what this is. It's just going to be a deck uh, spotlight on this guy because I think he has a really cool deck and it played out in a in a way that's really interesting. So as opposed to last time, I actually have some Kalino Harpies in my hand and my Wild Hunt Hound, so I go for the uh, play on the first round going first, which is basically what I'd like to do every time. So it plays on this first Necker. I'm getting flashbacks of when I started playing Close Beta where they play, you know, much, much less skilled players would uh, play out their Necker way too early and then you would kill it all three times in the first round, and then they would have no deckers left. You know, while they were still really underpowered. But that's not what this guy is doing. Don't be fooled. This guy is not dumb. This techno jellyfish. He he knows what's going on, man. He's not going to let me get... He He's baiting me, and he's saying, you... <laughs> you, you don't know what you're doing, or... Uh, I am missing... Or, I don't know. Forget it. I, I lost that sketch. I was going to be something like... You think I'm a noob, but you're wrong. And he plays out as Necker Warrior. I'm kind of expecting this. I use my spy because I want to flip the coin. I know he wants. I know he wants to play out a warrior, and I know he wants to make this round a little bit longer. So I put the spy, flip it, go for the high tempo play of Woodland Spirit, so I can catch up. Start playing. Start getting those fog ticks down, and then hopefully next time I can just play a more low tempo play like a a Wild Hunt Hound. <laughs> so he plays out his second. Wow, uh, warrior this is the second Necker warrior, so that means he has two, four, six Neckers in his deck. And if I had a Swears here and I actually want to do this, I want to clip this and I want to just watch that consume wants to cry. I want to play uh, Spying Nilfgaard with Emir, and I want to put a Swears in it and take out some other card. I want to put Swears in it, and Swears is the card that will target a bronze unit on the car on the field or in someone's hand, and then you can discard all of those units from their deck so it would be so if i had swears right now i would have discarded six neckers into his graveyard from his deck i uh, would have been insane it's like the ultimate deck thing right except no he put those cards in there on purpose he wants as many neckers as he possibly could get i want to do that i want to swear someone so i'll get out my second weather i'm actually not playing the most optimally here because he could just pass on me with two weathers and get a nice easy out but uh, I'm relatively confident that he doesn't want to give it the round just yet. He wants to start getting these consume this consume engine off. Wow. Oh, I forgot. He played three Necker Warriors. So that means he has eight Neckers in his deck. This guy is absolutely insane. So, but uh, I'm hoping to get my weather to try and try and win me this round without actually having to play anything that's too uh, committal. Like my uh, like my Aridin or my Commander's Horn or maybe even Caretaker. So I play out my second Clan of Harpy because I know this time the weather is going to take some as much as it needs to to pass me this round. And now I'm just waiting for him to basically get up. And now I've effectively flipped the coin without any downside because of the fog or more or less no downside because of my weather rather. He eats it, he starts getting those consumes off, he starts building up his carryover, because it's actually not outside the realm of possibility for him to go for a two-round here. Now, uh, granted, I, I, if I'm playing like a consumed monster deck and I'm playing with Neckers, I typically like to save my Ekimar as to eat the Neckers in like round three, but the thing is, this guy's got an entirely different strategy going on, so that in, it, in itself really surprised me. Uh, so why did I move it to the melee row? I, that's kind of a bit of a mistake, actually. I could have just I could have just moved it to the range row, but I guess I want to eliminate his carryover uh, as much as possible. And also, I do still have one more drowner in my hand that I can move to the the range row because the problem is I don't want this range row to run out of units to hit, keep hitting because I want to uh, I want to make my lead as big as possible over over time. Bit of an odd time to use clear skies there, but he doesn't get it in. He should have used that way earlier. He could have used that even before he did like the second Necker Warrior. 
but it doesn't matter. I go ahead and play out my uh, my other weather. I'm totally fine doing this because I just want to thin those out of my deck most of all. I'm not really like weather. It's not my win condition in this game. I'm not playing Frost Aridin where it is. I'm just I'm not playing Frost Aridin, so weather is not my win condition. Uh, using control slash mid rangey option. Uh, can, uh, using control slash mid rangey tactics is. I guess like weather just fall under that, but it, weather it's kind of its own subset of disruption, I think. So he does this crazy play. <laughs> uh, so I, I didn't catch the name of that card. It's a new card, but it's a strength unit. You place it down and it takes a, I believe it consumes a unit in your graveyard. I oh, no, no, it consumes a unit in your deck and then it plays a cop and it triggers its death wish. I think is what it is. So he plays out his Necker. So I believe he has one Necker in the graveyard, right? Yeah, he has one Necker and uh, one Spy. So he has his. Now he has his. Uh, now that he has a Necker in the graveyard, now he can start doing things like Slizard. Uh, Slizard. Slizard, if he has it. And Slizard will consume it and then trigger its death as well. And see, the thing is, he's not worried about overplaying his neckers because he has so many he has eight neckers he has, or he has six neckers now left in his deck once in the graveyard once in the field so he is not worried at all there it is she troll of virgin uh consume a bronze death witch unit from deck without boosting and trigger that death witch which means it's going to pull out a necker from his deck one goes to the graveyard one goes to the field because he has eight of them in the deck he can just keep pulling and pulling and pulling those now that he has two neckers on the field every time the round switches uh, carries over into the next round he's gonna have two neckers come out and the thing is it seems doesn't seem like much oh four five strength five strength necker that's nothing it's like serious uh it's like serious mark varg and Old geared, right? But no, he still has his leader. He still has consumes left in his hand. He's just gonna keep consuming, consuming, and consuming until he these neckers are ten piece, uh, ten apiece, and then come around like three or two even. He can just consume all three of those, and then he gets uh like sixty points, right? And just a single move, absolutely insane. This is so ridiculous because it doesn't seem like much. Oh, just one more necker, right? No, no, no. That's doubling. The Necker power. And the Necker power alone is already incredibly strong. And doubling it is just... Oh, it hurts my heart how powerful it is. Like, there, no amount of weather that I'm going to play or whatever is going to help me win this game. Because he's just going to win. Because he has uh, the unlimited power of the Neckers. <sighs> like, my carryover is not even going to come close to matching his. So I basically just have to drive past here, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> What is four little harping, uh, harply, harpy hatchlings gonna do here? Nothing. Oh, I can't play Ekimara though to counter his carryover. I get rid of it. Why did I get rid of it? I could have counted his carryover. What am I doing? Oh, that was a mistake. Because if I play Ekimara, I force him to play at least one card. Ah, oh, that was a mistake. Why did I do that? I should. I totally should have played it. Maybe I can save Dorgray. I can understand that. But if I have an Ekimara in my hand, I just play it. Force him to play one card while I still get carryover. I guess because I was in the mindset like that no amount of carryover is going to win this game. And I'm going to need things like uh, maybe like Scorch. Like not even Scorch will do anything. I kill two Neckers. Two more come out. Maybe I get rid of those two Neckers as well. Two more come out. They just keep coming. It's just it's like an actual like Necker swarm. <laughs> so I'm counting the Neckers on this graveyard. There's three, four, five, six, seven. And I believe he has three more. And then if that's not bad enough, and it's so smart, he plays it the three crones. Now, the thing is, like, crones have been not played in a while, right? It's because they're uh like there's been more silver slots that have been better in general. Like most silvers got a bit of a buff, but the the trio cards, trio silvers did not. So they've been kind of left on the dust. But the thing is, they're still an incredibly powerful tempo tool tool. And this is the kind of thing you play like when he's trying to set up his Neckers and Necker Warriors. He plays out Crones first so that he doesn't get passed on tempo as easily. Uh, so that would have been more effective in the first round. But he plays out in the third round and it's just brutal. He plays out 20 points in a single turn. He already has the 10 points on the Neckers that he's going to be cycling through. I can't play my Woodland Spirit, but it's not going to matter. No amount of my... <sighs> no. No matter what I do, it's not ever going to be enough. And I actually probably should have played this on the the range row. But that's not the big deal. I think I was kind of in the mindset that I need to set up for Commander Swarm, but I have multiple opportunities to do so. 
That's not even that big of a deal. And one way a lot of people have been dealing with the Snecker issue is with muscle, but I don't actually have muscle. Uh, muzzle in the first round, so you take away the Necker at that point in time. Uh, so I can't deal with it. <laughs> so I try and lock one, but it doesn't even matter. It does not matter because he's just going to eat this Necker and it's going to pull out another Necker. So use K Ran to eat it. He probably should have used the Consume uh, Leader when he was able to to get the other Neckers out, but maybe he has another way to cycle through the Neckers, like a Fran Warrior or something. It would be absolutely brutal. So I'm going to use Caretaker because the rest of my hand is garbage. <laughs> so I pull out. Uh, I'm looking through his graveyard. He just has like absolutely nothing. Maybe I take Ekimara, but otherwise, I don't know. It's just it's all it's also garbage. Oh, this is bad. I eat the Foggle just in case he has another Weather Clear. I get to consume the Foggle without uh, losing that four points in the future. Also, if I, if I somehow manage to play another Fog, I get the Foggle back out. So he plays out his ghoul and doesn't really get too much because he's not playing a graveyard consume deck. Pull that to the melee row, start trying to get some damage on it. He plays out a slight lizard. He's going to pull out another necker. And then by this, then, okay, so by this point, he wants to play his, uh, his leader, eat those two neckers, get two more out of them, out of the, out of the deck. <sighs> Assuming he has that many. Who knows? I don't, I don't know how many neckers he has left. And like, like the, I just, it's like impossible to deal with this, right? Because, uh, and I'm, just, I'm not saying it's like unbalanced uh, or anything like that. Yeah, okay, so there's a clear skies. I would have lost that Foglet. So by consuming with my Kimara, I don't lose those four points. Oh, wow. If I had an Igni here, that actually wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, <laughs> if I had Igni here, that would have been okay. But I don't have Igni. So I go for the swipe instead, the last rate. And he's going to just annihilate me with this this leader. So he eats one, or he eats k to boot to boost them up. Then he eats one Necker. And then he eats another Necker. No, wait, he doesn't. Yeah, there it is. Oh, wow, he only actually got one. He should have uh, ate two and then one Necker. And that would have maximized his boost. But still, even still, I'm just not even close. Oh, I guess I am kind of close. It was closer than I remember. I remember being like absolutely annihilated. Maybe if I would played that Ekimari around two instead of giving it away, that might have been helpful. That was close, I don't remember. But anyway, but also he kind of made a bit of a mistake there. He didn't count his Neckers, but that's fine. Oh man, what a crazy, like, it's so crazy, like, how many Neckers he cycled through. He cycled through two, four, six, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, he cycled through, he played, he, <laughs> he cycled, he had a, he had a, he had a total of nine Neckers in play over the course of this match. He played, he cycled through eight. Because one went to the graveyard from his deck. Yeah, he cycled through eight Neckers. <laughs> it's just it's, how do you deal with that? I know how you deal with that, but I'm just saying it's it's really cool. I think this is a really interesting deck, and I think I played it almost to the best of my ability. Although he did get kind of unlucky. I don't think he had his his Crones in round one, and also he didn't punish me by maybe passing earlier than he should have. I don't know. This whole game is a little bit weird. But that's what that's what made it fun. Uh, I'm probably like I've never actually even though I've been playing up against a lot of consumed monsters in the past couple days and watching things like what slam I actually haven't seen anyone run that eight strength uh, troll she mother or something that's evil's called in the in the way that gives you two knackers at once which I think is absolutely incredible and also you play three knackers which I think was crazy three decker warrior or I should have said necker warrior is what I meant so they got so many knackers in the deck and like that's it's a thing that can really blow up on you if you're not able to pull through all of them but he absolutely did he was pretty patient with his leader and his other cards I don't like some like there's some consumed synergy here but it's not necessarily necker synergy I think he should have had more cards like uh the crone which kind of made up for his low tempo plays trying to set up the neckers uh, and also, he, had, he was forced to use two clear skies, which is really strange. So maybe he's going up against a lot of weather. But that seemed less than optimal. I think, like, he totally could have, like, whipped me even more than he already did. Uh, even though I tried to play, like, as best my deck could possibly go forward. And, like, I played two Lin Spirits. I played a Commander Scorn. I played, like, all my golds. Like, and I still lost. <laughs> and I consider this deck pretty powerful that Petra Hobby put together. And I still lost. That's how, like, powerful this, the deck I went up against was. Of course, you have options like Peter and... 
Peter Sang- Sanguin, something like that, and like Muzzle, but I didn't have either of those options. That's typically how you stop them where you're trying to cycle through the Deckers as much as you possibly can in the early game, but I don't really have that option. Fun deck. Fun deck. Thanks for watching. <laughs>